Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock Central Time. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. It's another episode of the Roundtable, and we always have great DJs here, and we always have a lot of fun things going on, talk about a bunch of fun stuff and exciting things. This is your place for gear, your place for information, hopefully always great information, and helps you out with your gigs. Uh, it looks like we lost Terry. I know he's at a gig. He had run back in. Oh, he's coming back in. Maybe he lost some signal. He's coming back in. There he is. Looks like he's at a booth ready to eat some food. <laughs> Maybe he'll be sharing dinner with Terry here. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, I'm going to wait till Terry stabilizes a little bit here. Uh, give me about five minutes. Okay, no problem. He needs a minute or two. Well, he is doing that as always, uh, like I say before, and I always say, thank you for tuning in here. If you're watching this live on Twitch, make sure you say something in the chat area. I always like reading no chat comments out loud. And Jeff is already in the chat comments array. He says, hello, Twitch. It's always great having Jeff in there and always having you out there watching in the chat area. The other thing also, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure all these guys have YouTube channels. Make sure you go follow their YouTube channels. But before you do that, hit the subscribe button, the thumbs up, like, and the bell icon for here so you know when we have a next episode that uploads. I always try to make sure uploads are here on Mondays by 12 noon, and there's always a countdown timer with those to get them up and running and going. With that said, let's start off tonight with some fun stuff tonight. Uh, well, first thing first, before we start the fun, uh, I don't know if you guys saw or not, but we lost a, I, I would say someone who is very much an icon in country music today, uh, Toby Keith. Uh, he passed away from stomach cancer. He's been battling for a couple of years, and unfortunately, he lost his battle, um, and I can tell you that, you know, uh, a, a lot of weddings I have that have country themes or country music have had Red Solo Cup multiple times. And I even have a video here on YouTube as well. Uh, if you're here watching on Twitch, you can go to YouTube and watch it. Of a beer dude at a wedding that uh, was walking down the aisle, had Red Solo Cup full of beer to Red Solo Cup. So I want to just take a second here and uh, I want to hear if you guys have played Toby Keith and if there's a song besides Red Solo Cup that you played and you enjoyed uh, with him. I'm going to start with Dwayne over in Ohio. Dwayne, have you played Toby Keith? And if so, have you played anything other than Red Solo Cup? Uh, that I don't remember because I don't play him that much. I'm sure if he has a a popular song, I'll probably play that, but I don't do a lot of country. Okay, not a problem. Matt in California, what about you? Uh, give me some Toby Keith songs, and I'll tell you if I played them. <laughs> I don't know. Um, let's see. Oh, American Soldier is a good one. So I used to line dance to. Uh, I want to say American Soldiers. No, that's not the one. No, I don't know. I don't really play country that much. Um, I've played I Love This Bar, of course. Um, and that's probably it. Um, I mean, yeah, I know Red Solo Cup, but he's like country as country can be. I, I like uh, I like Kenny Chesney a little better. If you're going to rock that kind of hat, I think Kenny Chesney is a little bit more. Kenny Chesney, out. as I was told by a few people who are country fans, is more stadium country. Yeah. This guy's more country country, like red. He's country. more sing along country. He's more the fun country. He's more the I'm gonna roll my sleeves up. I'm going to uh you know get dirty and deep and uh, working on a truck or a tractor or, or something. He's a, he's more of a working man versus hey, look, I'm the glamorous, kind of glammy, kind of southern, you know, rock country. Yeah, I have Red Solo Cup and As Good As I Once Was. Those are the only two Toby Keith songs I have in my library. Okay. All right, so um, I'm going to go to uh, 
I'm going to go to uh, Tommy, which uh, being here in the Western suburbs of Chicago, as well as up in Wisconsin at school, um, I'm sure you've played some uh, some country music. Uh, Toby Keith, have you played a lot of him? And if so, did you play something other than Red Solo Cup? Uh, yeah, I have. Uh, the bar I play at in Green Bay a lot, uh, They it's technically a country bar, and then when the DJs go on later, we'll switch it to more open format, but... I throw some country in uh, as good as I once was is definitely one of them that I'll play sometimes. And then uh, I was actually playing on veterans day this year. So I threw on uh, courtesy of the red, white, and blue. That was definitely one of the most electric uh, moments I've had at that bar. The whole place was singing. Everybody was pumping their fists. It was a, uh, it was a really, uh, really cool moment. Yeah. That is a song that will, especially if you get a good crowd, it's very patriotic and it will, get people going and singing along and rocking with that song. It's kind of one of those uh, great anthems, you know, one of those great uh, country anthems you get in there. DJ Brentley, who's knee deep in the wonderful world of Western Wisconsin. Yeehaw. And had to deal with uh, the, the boys at the Blue Cam, you know, Code Blue Cam over there with all the um, craziness there on uh, YouTube. So if you've been done so already, Make sure you follow DJ Brentley on his YouTube channel and his Instagram and everything like that. But also go over to Code Blue Cam and watch the, the antics of greater... <laughs> well, the greater lacrosse. Drift lacrosse. Drift. I mean, the crackheads. No, no, no. They're not crack. There's a difference. Oh, I'm sorry. Meth heads. Meth heads. Meth heads. Meth heads. I'm sorry. There's a heads. huge they're just, difference. They're just... Um, the craziness is amped up. It's like kind of like, you know... Uh, comparison, being homeless in San Jose or being homeless in Oakland. Even the San Jose and San Francisco bums will have a little bit more of an attitude like snobbiness to them than the Oakland homeless club. And I see this in person. It's kind of accurate. They all but, uh, up at that one park. <laughs> but, you know, one comment out yeah. there, I can... Oh, the parks are out? Oh, yeah, yeah. There's one park that they took over here in La Crosse that they haven't reopened since they kicked everyone out. And it used to be the dog park where I could go let my two shepherds, you know, burn it off and play with some other dogs. And now they haven't reopened it as a dog park. It, it's bad and when you have it, someone outside the area knowing that it, you're known for a certain park with the meth heads hanging out there. <laughs> it, accurate, accurate. But, you know, one common denominator I could throw out there between the police and the meth heads is they all listen to country. There's a common denominator between them. There you go. So, Toby Keith. Uh, yeah, you. because of where I'm at, yeah, I do play them. You'll, ne you'll never catch me playing Red Solo Cup unless it's on a must playlist at a wedding. I will not drop that at a bar or anywhere unless I am told to. Now, I've done Red, White, and Blue, but that was one of many of the police weddings will ask for that, you know, uh, or many of the small, like, weddings that had people from the small, small towns. Hi, Mira. <laughs> I, see I, I see your assistant is uh, giving you some uh, makeover uh, tips. Yeah, that. she's having a little fun with me. And then, like, Beer for My Horses, Should Have Been a Cowboy, This Bar. Yeah, those are some definite, if you can call them country bangers, that... I can drop at a wedding or at a college party bar, and they definitely work. So why no Red Solo Cup? What's your uh, hang up in that? It, it comes, it definitely to me falls in that same category of songs like Keep It Shuffle, Cha Cha Slide, YMCA, Cotton Eye Joe. It's overplayed commercials. You know, just no, it's not like here if if you're at a wedding, for example, and you have to play every group participation song, you're doing it wrong to make them work. There are so many other better songs that aren't cheesy that kind of play on that cheesy group thingy that I try to avoid unless I have to. Okay. Okay. Thinking outside the box, not doing the same as everyone else. That's important back. stuff. And you got you got you got some hits there. And I'm gonna yeah. go over I'm gonna go over to uh, North Carolina to Jeff. I'm sure you play a little country there, considering you're in the South. And we're going to go further south than that in just a minute or so. But uh, Toby Keith, what do you what do you play from him? What is something that hits you play from him? 
Um, yeah, I just had three country weddings um, just this fall, and in two of them, I uh, had requests for should have been a cowboy. That's you know one of his first hits. Um, it's definitely you know it's 90s country. You know it's pretty popular now again, but uh, I. I don't play Red Solo Cup that often. I mean, I think in total, I maybe have played it, you know, in all my gigs, maybe twice. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't really put it in my uh, playlist unless it's requested. And I don't recall that it's ever been requested. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I have it. I, I play it every so often, but usually it's more or less when people request it. And again, the one wedding I had, the beer dude was coming in, and it's a couple. The couple wanted Red Solo Cup for him because he was hat Red Solo Cup. So this song fit what was going on. So I'm gonna go further south than you, and further a little west in the little state of Texas, small little state, very very little. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go to Terry the Moose. Uh, what about you for Toby Keith? What do you play? And other than Red Solo Cup, where are the hits you hit down there? Everything that Toby Keith got. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Anything special that okay. you can call uh, out off the top of your head? Um, um, Red Solo Cup is very, very popular. Um, I got a bunch on my head, but I just can't articulate them right now. But no problem. Um, I do like. Like this wedding coming up that I got, I got a Spanish country wedding coming up. So I'll be playing all kinds of country music. But Toby Keith is very popular. Okay. Are you uh, close to your destination there, uh, Terry? No, I got a few minutes. Okay. We'll come back to you when you uh, when you get parts. That way you're not uh, driving and talking. That way uh, the, the PD does not... Uh, give you a uh, citation for anything because we don't want to get you in any kind of trouble and we don't want you getting hurt or anything like that so we don't want to bug you too much but I'm glad that you do play uh, Kobe Keith especially again I would I would expect people who have a lot of country fans are going to expect uh, Toby Keith on a regular basis now that his passing you know we're all probably going to see especially people who like country they're going to ask for more Toby Keith and, we, and having that good uh, repertoire of Toby Keith is always uh, good to have so one of the things looking at 2024 for events and weddings, I know Nam just dropped. We have a couple more shows coming up. I'm sure we're going to see some more new gear from other manufacturers and so forth. Um, one of the things for 2024, and I'm, I'm going to go through the list here of everyone. Has anyone thought or looking at or thinking about doing or already have a all battery setup for either a main setup or a secondary setup. And I'm not talking about for ceremony because a lot of people have for ceremony. I'm talking about a second setup, like for cocktail or dinner, where you actually have a controller, not uh, playing off a playlist, um, or having a battery main setup for a event at a you know a barn wedding or a out a party out in the middle of a park or something or an event. Or would you rather have a generator, bring a small little generator, like those little Honda generators or one of the ones from uh, um, Harbor Freight that are really quiet? So I'm going to start with uh, Jeff. Have you been looking at a all battery setup for a either a second setup or a main setup that you want to run with the 2024? Or would you just rather just use your regular setup and bring a small generator to run everything? Uh, I've not been looking for a full full gig or full rig uh, battery powered, but um, I did buy a um, a backup battery uh, for my uh, ceremony gig last year, and I'm pretty happy with that. And it is powerful enough to run a small controller and a laptop, and uh, then I do have my battery uh, powered Mackie. Um, so you know, technically, I could I could run full battery on a uh you know and mix uh for something other than just a ceremony um but like we were discussing before the show you know it, it it's it's coming i mean the the equipment is uh is the option of going battery powered is uh, is really on its way in and i see a lot of a lot more items 
um, you know, for DJs battery powered coming along and, and it's a great thing because I mean, it's, it's nice to have that option. You know, I mean, it's, uh, not everybody has experienced a full power outage at a wedding, but a lot of us have. And, uh, and, you know, if you could be the hero, uh, for 20 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever, while that is happening, you know, that's priceless. So, yeah. It's, and it's that, that's, an, that's an important thing to look at, especially, uh, if your area that has what, you know, thunderstorms or has, uh, you know, maybe questionable power. But, you know, and we're talking, again, a little before the show about battery stuff. And Jeff is right. You know, I have Maui 5 Goes from LD Systems, and they have a battery in there. And uh, was doing a wedding l last year or year before last. So you're, I want to I want, no, no, I want to say in 22. And the, uh, the, the speakers are on opposite sides of the area. And I'm running them wirelessly. So I have my Sennheiser wireless system running wirelessly to each one. And uh, Tracy was on the other side by the other speaker, and it's probably 25, 30 feet away. So it's not, you know, really close by. And we're, you know, filling, it's on the other side of the dance floor. And she went over there and she's like, there, there's a light off on the lot, on the uh, stack. I go, what do you mean? She goes, you know, it has all the little lights in the back and it has, you know, top one's green and has a couple of yellow lights and a red light. And she goes, the, the green light's off. I'm like, it's off. She goes, yeah. I go, well, I go, is unplugged? So she goes over there. Somehow or another, someone from the facility uh, pulled a plug from the wall and plugged someone else in. You know, I you, you love that. Speaker was running. This was probably three hours into the reception. So this is three hours in. Dean phased us one bit. So she plugged it back in and charged back up. But it shows you having that battery-operated speaker and again, Maui fives are not huge speakers, but they do have a good amount of sound. One hundred and twenty, uh, you know, SPL, good amount of sound. Didn't miss miss a beat. So having that battery there was, you know, totally, uh, you know, a small thing. But I didn't know it was not plugged in. So that technology again, Pioneer just came out with one. You know, EVs got now got two of them. Um, there's a bunch of other manufacturers probably going to come out with other ones as well. Again, LD's got theirs. Uh, what, uh, who else? Mackie's got one. Uh, Bose has one. So you have these manufacturers are coming out and they're going to come out more and more and more other than the eight little dr eight inch driver. You know, like, uh, EV just came out with 12. Someone's probably going to come out with a 15. And who, who was it? Uh, I think Matt was saying that someone had a battery operated moving head. Um, I can't remember what manufacturer it was. Matt, what man? Do you remember what manufacturer it was with the uh, battery app moving head? Uh, J Maz came out with it first. Okay. Now China, China's starting to catch on, but um, not really. So J Maz, the Atco spot, I think it's what it's called. It's not super bright, but I mean, for a battery powered moving head, I think it's like a sixty watt LED. So it's not dim. A sixty watt LED that throws a good amount of light. You know that that's like you know three or four times what you'd get on a normal incandescent bulb, and you're, you're putting out some good amount of lumens at sixty sixty watt LED consumption. Uh, you know that's like you know again, hundred and eighty watts. You know incandescent, so it, it's it's throwing out some good amount of light. Um, yeah. Mr. Dixon, no, sorry, fifty watt, fifty watt. 50 watts, okay. But still, that's still like 120 yeah. watts, normal, 130 watts. Mm -hmm. So, again, throw out some good light. Would, uh, Mr. Dixon, would you, are you, or are you thinking of getting a battery, either secondary setup or main setup, or would you rather have a, uh, basically a generator to uh, power yourself if you had to do something at a uh, vent outside? I thought about getting a battery. And I also had a little battery. Back in um, 2021, whenever they reopened school, when they reopened schools, the, um, I lost my music room. I had to go to room to room because, you know, the social distancing. So I had, I used one of those Halo Bolt, the, you know, the little generator on my cart to go room from room. So I've been trying to do, do that. But then lately I've been trying to find something that's going to handle all my equipment as opposed to going out buying a battery powered um, equipment 
since I got a lot of stuff that needs to be plugged in, I'm trying to find a good one where I can, like a Jackery or something that I can plug in. And I see Micro Center got this door is selling those now. So I've been eyeing that. Micro Center has a lot of great stuff. And if you're not near a Micro Center, Micro Center is not near you, go to their website, Micro Center. They do ship uh, nationwide. They have a lot of great deals on computer stuff, but they also have some other things there as well. Um, so go through a few things here on the chat. I see people talking, including Mr. Mikey Mike from, from Pennsylvania. And I know he's a little under the weather, but um, he is, he said, an American soldier and too drunk to karaoke for that. Uh, Adrian E is in the chat. Hey, what's up? What's going on, Adrian E? Um, if you don't like country, Toby Heath, uh, was all a request. Yeah. Uh, here's a question. Um, oh, you said this battery question should be for Rick Webb. Mm, yeah. Maybe Rick, uh, may have some ideas on that. Uh, whatever his ideas are, it's his ideas. Uh, Adrian E says, no, no battery, not interested, uh, in a complete battery setup. And then, uh, Mike is asked, is anyone ordered, a new battery operator controller. That's would be part of an all battery system. If you're going to do that, you do a battery operator controller, your battery and computer, and battery operated speakers. That would be the way to go. And I know uh, you know, again, Pioneers release theirs. Um in music, don't music has one too, right? Someone else has a battery operator controller, right? Or am I dreaming that up? Um and then you have you know, if you want to buy a battery pack, you can buy a battery pack and do that. And uh looks like we might have a spammer here. Yep, we have a spammer. And I'm gonna get rid of them. Where is this mystical chat you always talk about? In Twitch. Well, I don't do Twitch, Twitch. chat. What is this Twitch of which you speak? I'm too old for that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm on Twitch. Come on, dude. I'm like three times your age. Get with it. <laughs> Ugh, I'm not hip anymore, I guess. <laughs> Maybe that's like the new, like in, like for, you know, how like the, the older crowd went to Facebook. Maybe now they're going to Twitch. I'm not calling you guys old. I'm just. <laughs> yeah, we're old. <laughs> Calling us old. That's nice. Man. I'm just trying to get the spam out of here. And... Uh, oh, you got love technology. Yeah, just ignore it. Yeah. Gotta love it. Anyways, um, the other thing also is that, uh, Again, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff going on with technology, and it's 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 amazing, and we should uh, always keep your mind open for battery operated stuff. You know, it's kind of like it's kind of cool. So, I'm going to go to uh, Matt. I'm going to go back to you because I talked to you about the moving head real quick. But what about you? Would you get a battery set up for a main system, or you rather deal with your dual twenty ones and uh, your light show and have to bring in a uh, a, a like a hundred k uh, diesel generator to run everything. Well, I would never do a battery powered main system. That's for sure. Ever, um, I don't think it'll ever get to that point where you can. I mean, I shouldn't say that, but I mean, if you could power my whole setup with, I mean, a battery powered system is pretty much a generator at this point. Um, if we're not, those battery banks are just mini generators that are electric instead of gas powered. But I don't think it'll get to the point where they can put enough lithium ion batter batteries in a subwoofer to make it actually bump and bump hard. Um, so probably not. 
I mean, I'd, I'm open for it. It'd be great. Uh, but then again, you got to run cables. So like, what's the, what's the point anyway? Like, I, I see like what Cleveland Terry was trying to do with like a fully battery powered system where he used like uh, just X fives and some Mackies and like Bluetooth, but so I don't if you see had, it happening. If you had a gig, if you had a gig in a, let's say a park, someone hired you to say, Hey, we got a gig in this park and there's no power to it. Um, you would forego it that, or you they got to find a generator. Not my responsibility. I mean, I could certainly quote them for like triple or quadruple the price for the effort of me going out figuring out how much watts I need and getting it there and putting gas in it and figuring out how it works. Sure, if they want to pay that, but I don't have that happen too much. The only thing we get here are beach weddings, and luckily that's just for a ceremony, so easy enough. Not a problem. So DJ APOC, aka Tommy, what about you? Are you looking at anything battery operating and going for a battery setup or even a you know a battery backup? Or would you just buy a generator or borrow a generator from someone? Uh I've had to use a generator before for certain uh gigs. But uh if I if I was actually looking into maybe getting one of those like Jackery uh electric uh packs. I don't know how much uh, power can really be run off of those. I'm assuming you could probably run like one speaker and your, you know, controller and board and all that. Um, Uplights, I would definitely buy as uh, wireless and uh, battery power just because I feel like that would be a really uh, easy thing to do, set them up. Similar to the ones that you have, those Rockville wedges. Um it's easy to move them around the room. You don't have to be right next to an outlet or run extension cords. Uh, but as for like audio and stuff, um, I haven't really looked into any wireless options actually. Yeah, fair enough. I know, uh, again, there's a lot of manufacturers that were battery operated speakers again, LD systems, their line array, uh, EV, uh, they got two now again, uh, Bose, uh, your um, uh, Mackie. And equipment pioneers just brought theirs out. I'm sure there's other manufacturers I'm missing. Um, because I, I don't not I'm not looking for that system. The cool thing with the with the pioneer system um is that wireless connection, you can connect, connect up to eight units to the wireless system. So you could have eight speakers, you know, space between each one around an area and fill an area. And one of the things uh I know last night uh uh, a couple people were talking about is like for um, for things like, you know, you have a large area you want to cover, you want to use multiple speakers, you can have them run wirelessly across an area and fill an area with sound. Now, is it going to be booming with bass? No, they're eight inch driver. Um, David, you know, a decent sized tweeter. Uh, you know, it's not going to be pounding like, you know, Matt's dual 21s. It's not going to be blowing people out. But if you're going to cover, you know, for a speech or something like that, something along that realm, even plugged in, that wireless system is nice. If you're covering a hall for speeches and you wanted to have two or four speakers to cover a hall, you know, you could put a couple of speakers up and run them wirelessly and really have some decent sound and have people talking on it. Uh, DJ Brentley, what about you, sir? I know that you have some unique venues, but you always have your best place you have is your place on the river that you are oh, yeah. uh, basically a fixture at. But would you think about, or do you have, or have you done an all battery setup either for a main or secondary setup? I've thought about it briefly. I have no real interest in it. I mean, 99% of the venues I'm at are pretty well like celebrations, Cargill, and the bigger venues in the area. And I know, for example, Cargill has a backup generator uh, in the building. So if their main power goes down, the other one kicks in and everything comes back on within minutes. So there's that. I think Celebrations might have something similar as well because of how much they have going on there. Like, I think there's a backup battery set up, like a backup system out behind the building in addition to their uh, HVAC stuff and all that. But for ceremonies, I've been, you know, got a battery pack and I think it was in 2020 now, the Halo Bolt. And I don't think I need anything else aside from that because your my iPad, I never need powered up. I mean, if I show up to a ceremony, it should be fully charged. Uh, 
So all I'm powering is my wireless mics and a 112. The Halo Bolt does that, and I can crank everything out to the fullest volume, and it doesn't clip it out and make the breaker <coughs> and the battery turn off. So I think I'm good. I mean, I've looked at the E-verse, but I'm sorry, you know, pound for pound, I heard my business partner's E-verse compared to my Mackie Thumb 12, and I'm honestly, the thump's got a little bit more warmth to it, in my personal opinion. And with that, for a ceremony, because a lot of these outdoor venues, you're losing that low end almost as soon as it hits the speaker. So just to get a little bit more out of it in some of these outdoor places, I'll take my battery my battery pack and my Mackie 12. Well, that's that's why Evie came out with a 12-inch woofer versus the 8-inch, is to get it a little more lower end. And I, I, I get I, I understand oh, yeah. it. It doesn't make a difference. It still sounds bad, in my opinion. There you go. Sorry. And, you know, at where the point I'm at, why am I going to re- go and spend a grand on a speaker when I've got a fully functioning, tried and tested and true ceremony ring? There's no point for me to go anywhere else with it until something breaks. And even oh, yeah. then, I would probably, probably just buy the current version of what broke more than anything else. One thing with the battery packs, um, and I talked about this before, the Life Pro battery cells are better than the lithium ion. They retain charge longer, and they have less problems with the chemical breakdown lithium ion does can run into. Um, it is a little bit different, but you look for the Life Pro batteries and for those uh, jackeries and stuff like that. They okay. they do hold a charge longer. So you don't have to worry about charging it up as much as you do with the lithium ion. But like anything, there's always pros and cons to everything. And it's it's like anything else. Do your research, read, look at stuff, look at reviews, read reviews, ask questions, and make an informed purchase. You need you're put your money out there. You want to spend every penny you have on something, make sure you do the right things. Uh, this is not for you to say, hey, you gotta go out and buy this. This is for hey. If I run into stuff, this is what I may need, where I may not need. You may be like DJ Brentley or Jeff and have a battery system that you bring, you know, you bring a jackery, plug your stuff into, you can rock it out without a problem. Or you can say, hey, I want a whole separate battery operated system, and this is what I need, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And you want to do that, you're more welcome to. It's, it's your money. You decide what's best for your business. And I'm going to go down to Texas, and I see – Terry's running around somewhere. He's going in and out. And I saw uh, yeah. DJ Fire is in the chat too. Hey, DJ Fire. I'm in the, yeah. Um, now, I'd, uh, if I did, um, I don't trust uh, lithium that much. I do trust gasoline. <laughs> uh, I do have a generator and I do use it if I need to. Um, I've, I've done like lots of events, like the last time I did a, a Alzheimer's event, they had a trailer generator. I just plugged into it. So I, mostly I would think that as a generator, I trust the generator a little more. Um, I am a certified welder, so I have a generator on my welding machine. If I need to use it, I can use it in this quiet. And that's the important thing is that, you know, again, having options for things. And, you know, like before, I gave an example before the little Honda generator or the uh, uh, one from Harbor Freight. And again, there's other generators out there. I'm just giving that as an example. You know, something that's very quiet. I have a um, I have a six and a half K generator in case the power goes out here at the house. But we've used that. A couple gigs now is that loud? Yes, it is a loud generator because trust me, I've we've had lost power and we had it running for you know sometimes for a couple of days, um, powering our refrigerator and a few other things. Uh, unfortunately, stuff like that happens in life, and we've actually used it at a couple gigs. And again, we ran a long extension cord because it is a louder generator. If I had knew it was getting consistent gigs somewhere where I needed power, I definitely would invest into one of the smaller, quieter generators or into some battery packs, you know? So, and again, the technology is, it's very interesting, this technology. And uh, I don't know if you guys are 
um, think, you know, looking at it and stuff like that. I know Jeff and I were talking a little beforehand and we we're talking a little before uh, the show is that technology that Jeff is hitting the nail on the head. I, again, I totally believe more and more manufacturers are going to come out with that stuff. Uh, DJ Mikey Mike said, most of uh, my ceremonies, I use an all battery setup. That's good. And, you know, if people can hear everything, you're covering everything properly. It sounds good. And, you know, everything is covered. Then why not? You know, it, it's it's a good system to use is that battery operated stuff. And it is a interesting, again, more and more stuff come out with it. Very interesting technologies that are out there. So going to the next part of everything, of course, you know, it's, it's always hard and uh, it's always fun is marketing. Marketing is always fun. I always love it. And I always ask these questions for people. Uh, marketing on social media. So it could be your Facebook page, your Instagram page, your, fa your, your whatever, your threads, your YouTube, uh, whatever you do your marketing on. If you had to rank your top three sources that you get customers on for marketing, it could be the knot, it could be wedding wire. Those are social media driven as well. What are your top three marketing tools that you feel you use for social media? So I'm going to start with uh, Jeff over there in North Carolina. Your top three social media areas that you use that you feel you get the most amount of customers from, what would you say are? Uh, well, it depends on if you if it's strictly social media. I mean, I, I get uh, most of my most of my stuff from you know website uh, Google search, but, um, website, you know, Instagram and Facebook are obviously, you know, pretty big coming up right now is, uh, and I'm just now starting to, uh, do a little bit more on TikTok. So that, uh, is, is growing. Um, but those are, I think those are the three that, that, uh, I hit mostly you know, through every gig. I usually throw a, something out there, a picture or a post and, uh, you know, I don't throw a lot of extra money at it for advertising or uh, or anything like that. But um, yeah, I, I get uh, enough to keep me busy. So, and you know, when, when, I, when I talk about social media, Jeff, it's 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 like anything you put some work into. We get Instagram, t TikTok, that stuff right there. Even though you pay, pay for it, or don't pay for it, but it also affects your your website. If you're getting traffic in your website, if those people are Google searching you, you get the SEO of you know the social media bounce back to your website that also had to draw and draws people in which hopefully you know again as good as a dj you are hopefully you're getting an seo returned on you very heavily there in your market in uh, north carolina and i'm hopefully you're uh you're, you're busy and you have a lot of business coming in and that's why i would see everyone here get a lot of business and this is some of the things that you know we're looking at, at social media whatever you're using it does draw into your website. It does draw into your stuff because you have links on social media to your website. At least you should have. And you want to always draw people to that website to for them and encourage them to contact you through your website so they could see and read. You can control what's going on. Because social media, uh, which I've seen uh, like on Facebook or whatever, uh, I'll get ads for other DJ services on my own Facebook. Uh, and it's it's like, okay, fine, great. I'm I don't care about so-and-so's DJ service. Um, but the thing is that it's one of the things I see and I get myself. So I always try to drive customers to our website to stuff I can I can control and get people to look at things. So Mr. Dixon, you in over in Ohio? And you have, I know, a YouTuber just like Jeff and the rest of us here. What are your top three drivers in social media that you feel that you get the most traction out of? Um, Facebook, because usually I get um when I post a YouTube video or something like a um, highlight reel, that's when I usually get um contacted by people. Or when I go to Instagram and post the same video, I'll get that. And uh, then I guess YouTube would be number three. And then as far as getting leads that go nowhere, like the video that you had sent us, 
that would be wet and wire, which I'm going to get rid of because I get a lot of people, you know, asking for information, but I don't really, I get anything back from them. Or lately I've been getting a lot of spam where their wedding date and their post date, the dates don't match up and it seems kind of funky. So yeah, Facebook, then Instagram, and then YouTube will bring them all together. And then I'll point them to my website. Make sure that you're uh, marking those for uh, wedding wire or the knot. If you if you have a wedding wire knot account and you're seeing um, people spamming you, you can mark that as such. So it alerts people there so they take those accounts down because they don't want those accounts on there. Um, they don't want phishing accounts to take away money from the businesses on there because it's mostly small businesses. You know, 99.9% .9 of the businesses on wedding wire and the knot are small businesses or franchisees of of other businesses so it's it's one of the things that we as a community need to always look at and go okay how can we police this and how can we make sure that these people are knocked out as quickly as possible and if you're getting spam make sure you mark that as a spam um a spam account so dj brentley what about you what what do you say your top three on social media I will definitely say Facebook is the for me the top lead generator, if you will. And I think that you know ninety percent of the couples, at least in this market, because a joke with other people that do this, you know, are in the same industry. Lacrosse is about five to ten years behind what the national trends really are when it comes to social media and current trends. So yeah, people here have TikTok, but it's not as crazy as in other urban areas. So Facebook by far is my number one. I'm gonna have to say my YouTube channel is two, even though it doesn't get the number of hits I like, or would like to see, it gets the right hit, it gets the right, the right people are looking at my page. And therefore going from there and saying, hey, I saw this on your channel over the weekend. Can you do this my wedding? Cool. And then the last one, yeah, it's going to be Wedding Pro, the conglomerate. I do get a chunk of leads through there. And one thing that I, I don't get spam leads from there, which I'm really thankful about, but I've set my price points fairly high. So when you do that, and I think it's steering people away from even looking at that, I don't know, but all the leads I'm getting through the course of all my social media, as of late, knock on wood, have all been qualified leads where they know they're coming to spend a minimum of $2,400 to $2,500. They don't want my basic package. They want the add-ons, and they, they know exactly what they're getting into. And... With that, I've been making sure I track my leads, where they're coming from, how many I can actually take, and what my, you know, signing percentage is and all of it, just to see where I can improve or where I should be spending my dollars if I need to be spending. And that's an important takeaway from that is know exactly where and why stuff is coming from places. So, again, this is why I'm asking what's your top three. And Jeff, Dwayne, and you, so far, I'm not sure the other guys are the same way. They know exactly where it's coming from. You know exactly if you are investing money in something or just your time is money. Your time that you make a gig log, your time you make something is your time. And, you know, Jeff's got a family. Dwayne's got a family. Brentley's got a family. Tommy's got a family. Matt's got a family. Terry's got a family. I have a family. We have a family we want to spend time with. But when we invest time into our social media, into YouTube, into TikTok, into Facebook, into Instagram, on uh, Wedding Wire, on The Knot, on, you know, whatever you go into uh, Zillow and go into all this other stuff. Uh, Zola, uh, I, said, I said Zillow, Zola, <laughs> all these other things you go into. Um, it's, it's amazing how much time you can spend. I know I spend here every day at least, at least an hour in the morning just going through stuff be it YouTube, be it Instagram, be it Facebook, uh, be it everything else to see where things are at, see where stuff is tracking. And if someone said something back or not on those areas, um, 
And it's, it's, it's amazing how much you can do. And one of the things I do is Google voice for the business and sending messages through Google voice, text messages. I'm always seeing when I send a text message to someone and then seeing when I need to follow up with them. Oh, Hey, I text message this couple on this date, ask them if they're available. Didn't hear anything. I'll send one more message to them. I'm not going to bug them until the world ends, but I at least want to say, Hey, you know, maybe you didn't see the first message. And then again, that's, that's doing your social media. It's kind of, and again, that's, that's kind of saying, Hey, Dave, a question. I can refer them to my YouTube channel or to Facebook or to Instagram and say, Hey, you can take a look at this. You can look at that and see pictures of stuff we've done. Yeah. And um, one thing for you, DJ Bradley, uh, lacrosse, the population, according to Google, I just Google it, is 52,185 people. Yep. That, that I wouldn't say it's urban. I would say it's a it's a small town because. <laughs> well, we're the biggest. I mean, when you look at it, lacrosse is the biggest community between Madison and the Twin Cities. And part and parcel why you see all the crap on Cold Blue Camp, because it's on the 90 corridor directly between Madison, Chicago, Milwaukee, Madison, Chicago, Twin Cities. And with the outlying area, there's probably close to about 110,000 in the area. Similar to the outlet like Rochester, but you've got like in Lacrosse, you have on Alaska that is literally sitting right, you know, back to back with each other. And then back to back with on Alaska is West Salem, so on and so forth. So the outlying area, it might be a little spread out, but there's about 110 in the area. See, to me, that's so small because I can go to Naperville, Naperville's 170,000 people. Which is oh yeah, twenty minutes away from me. So, and my the the village I live in is thirty five thousand people. So it's like oh, <laughs> it's yeah. a small village in the Chicago area. So it, it's it's one of the things I go always do that and look at. So it's it's always fun, you know, when when people say it's this or that. It's I'm not trying to make fun of anything with lacrosse. I mean, it's it's a big oh, it's, town, you know. It's, it's a big okay. town in that area, and it draws a lot of people. Now, he has Brentley has a lot of draws to the bars he works at and to the wedding gigs he works at, because when you're the biggest town in the area and roughly about what, 80 miles or so in the, you know, exactly. circumference, you know, you have Minnesota in there, you have Wisconsin, you have a little bit of Iowa in there, a little bit of Illinois. I uh, mean, we, we definitely have all the college towns in the area here, for example, like within our market, because you've got St. Mary's and Winona state and Winona, Minnesota. Uh, you go down, I think it's St. John's or St. something or another, that's down in Decorah, Iowa, which is also, all these towns are directly off the river. So the one really cool advantage where I'm at that I probably couldn't pull off what I'm doing here in Chicago is that it's a much smaller market with all these small communities. And with, you know, the talent pool in Chicago is 100 times bigger than it is here. So... With that, it makes it a little bit easier for me to find nowadays the, the people that want to book me and I want to be booked by, if that makes sense. No, you again, you're selecting on your customers because you want to pick the right customers and not pick the customers who are going for, you know, cheap and are going to exactly. are, are be a, a, a customer who is very demanding. And uh, you don't mind a customer asking for things, but you don't want people to come in there and, you know, basically just not listen to you and, and you want to help them, but you want them to get out of their own way. And you're, it's always yeah. hard sometimes when you deal with a customer, it doesn't get out of their own way. So I'm going to go over to Tommy, who is the, uh, had a great uh, photo shoot on Instagram with his, uh, uh, his stylist look. You look like a model there. I just saw when you had the jacket on to one side of you. And I'm like, oh man, Tommy's like Mr. GQ here. I'm like, that picture right there, I'm like, okay, that's a cover of GQ magazine. Uh, you know, uh, what is your top three social media um, that you feel is for your business? Uh, number one is by far uh, Instagram. Uh, whether it's reels that I post, I try to post at least one reel or Instagram post every week, sometimes more than that. So videos, recaps, uh, posts like the photo shoot. Um gig content all that uh second would probably be snapchat uh because a lot of my uh following and stuff is younger anytime i'm playing like a bar 
uh, or club event, uh, I always post that flyer on my Snapchat and tell people where I'm at, what time I'm playing, and uh, if there's a ticket link or anything, I attach that on there. And then uh, I just recently got on TikTok, so I would say that's a, like my third, um, which is a lot of that Instagram real style content uh, that I'm also putting on TikTok to hopefully reach another audience there that may not be on Instagram or hasn't seen me before on Instagram. Okay. And what about like YouTube or anything else? Do you think it's... Uh, yeah, I have some videos on YouTube. I know for a fact that um, one of the events this summer that I did was a result of somebody seeing one of the YouTube video or they knew who I was, but they watched the YouTube video and they wanted uh, the CO2 gun because they saw it in my video. So that was an add on that I added to their package. Um, and yeah, just uh, I put content on YouTube and uh, I think those are the platforms I'm on. Uh, I'm also on Mixcloud and uh, Soundcloud for uh, mixes, but that's more to send out to anyone asking for <laughs> sample mix or anything like that. Yeah, it's yeah. Not, Soundcloud again. It that's that's to hear how you do things and how you put together a playlist, kind of. But yeah. the one thing I noticed on a lot of DJs on Soundcloud, and nothing against people on Soundcloud, it's when you hear stuff, it's all the same thing. They don't stretch. They don't try to do things. Yeah. One of the things when I do Twitch, I always try to do a theme and I always try to stretch and do stuff that I don't, wouldn't be able to do at a wedding. So it's not like, you know, when I go see, hear a, a DJ mix, a lot of guys on SoundCloud, it's all the same thing. They're all house or they're all this or all that. It's to me, if you want to show that you're a diverse DJ, you can do anything. You should have a house mix. Then you should have an R&B hit. Then you should have a, a rap one. You should have a 90s rap one. You should have an 80s one. You should have an 80s tunes, all 90s tunes, a country. You should show, show that you could do different things because different bars, different places, different couples want different music. And if you could show that you could put together a good playlist, be it for a uh, country or be it for whatever, and you get those people together, I really feel that you know, they listen to that and see that and they're like, yeah, this guy knows what he's doing or this girl knows what they're doing. And that's the important stuff. So Matt, go off to you. What are your top three social media hits? And uh, what do you feel is your, the one that you love the most? Um, well, us here in California, we don't really use Facebook. Um, I always laugh when DJs collect reviews on Facebook and use Facebook as like business. Like Facebook is, is, for old people and Midwesterners. No offense to anybody that's in the You're spot on. You are <laughs> it really spot is. on. It really is. Um, it's completely dead here. Um, so uh, Instagram is number one. Like people use Facebook here, but just for groups. But like, I don't think I've ever seen a Facebook link or Facebook review for any DJs in my area. Um, you know, Facebook is kind of just like everybody has one because they have a personal Facebook page, but not really for business. Um so definitely Instagram and then probably TikTok. Uh, I don't do the TikTok. I have a girl who does it for me. So she kind of just cross posts and posts whatever else uh, I tell her to or whatever she thinks would, would go well. So uh, we've gotten a couple leads from there so far. And then third, mm -hmm. that's probably it really. I mean, YouTube, I guess. I don't really, people don't discover me through YouTube, but They'll maybe see my website and then go to YouTube and see from there, like, oh, we saw you, we saw your YouTube videos, blah, blah, blah. But other than that, I mean, I, it's not, it's not a lead generator, really. Um, yeah. So Facebook would be cool, but Facebook also just has it out for me. It never works. Uh, my videos don't stay high quality when I upload there. I hate Facebook. I, I'm, well, I Facebook feel also old owns Instagram Facebook. too. So that's all, both, uh, my uh, Instagram's great. I mastered Instagram. Facebook is foreign to me. My girlfriend knows way more about Facebook than I do. I tell her, hey, how do I hide this post so people don't see when I was passed out drunk at Stagecoach five years ago? <laughs> that would be one you had to get rid of. Yeah, that would be. You know, hey, how do I how do I go back to this thing that I liked or I viewed? And she's she's a wizard with it because she doesn't use Instagram. She's like a Facebook. This master, is so. this is one of the things whatever you post online is there forever. So that's why you need uh -huh. to be careful what you post should you post something like if you go to my I have, I, I have a facebook page because i was i had to for to keep my business facebook page 
And, you know, Facebook is, is tied to Instagram. Instagram's tied to threads. So it's all this big, huge, you know, tra uh, trail you had to follow. But like on my Facebook, the stuff I do post, it's DJ stuff. It's never anything that I don't want people not to see. I don't post a lot of stuff on there because the fact that, you know, I, I don't want, I don't want people to say, oh, well, you're this or that, that or this. I just, you know, say, hey, look, this is what I did. Hey, this is something that I think is cool. And it's, it's, it's DJ stuff. It's never anything bad, raunchy, obscene or anything like that. And that's, that's the way I do it. Cause in case someone wants to see my personal Facebook page, nothing there to offend anyone. And that's the thing. Be, I just want to be like the UN neutral, no sides. Um, so, and the other thing also is that, um, my space, I still have my space. My space is still great. Tom's still my friend and I'm rocking that out very, very well, you know, and. You know, one thing I'll throw in there is your age, brother. I have the array, like every social media page that you could possibly or really utilize to have, be it Pinterest, Reddit, the t like alignable, the whole nine yards. I will maintain every one of those pages. And I'll do it illegal, like go through all the sub, you know, like the B and C list once a week. And the only reason I've done that, and it's honestly helped my Google search ratings or search uh, engine, is because if you have your name in this many different search engines and this many different social sites and so on and so forth, if you do a search for that DJ in particular, you're going to just get nothing but the, you know, a slew of things about the socials of this DJ, what he does, and everywhere he's at. And with that, if you have them, some of the dumbest posts I, you know, posts I didn't, you know, think would do anything get shared, you know, and it goes out of, you know, like, goes slightly crazy on a certain social media platform. And you're not expecting it to do anything at all. Yep. Those little things definitely help when people search. One of the things also helps too, Pinterest. You put up their pictures of uplighting. You put up pictures of subs. You put up pictures of gobos. You put up pictures of people dancing or video. If you could put video up there as well. Pinterest is another thing that, you know, uh, you do get some traction on there. So, Terry, DeMoose, down in Texas, what are your three top – your top three social media spots that you deal with that you get a uh, good amount of traction on? No, none of them. <laughs> um, I don't use, um, I don't use Facebook for business. I use it kind of for family and I have a couple of DJs on there that I talk to and everything else. Um, and then Instagram, I have an Instagram um, I'll throw a video on there every now and again, and there's a couple bars there that that um that that um, I talk to about um like a couple events that I got to do for those bars. But I pretty much um uh the big thing for me is gig salad. I I'm I'm big into gig salad. Uh, that's pretty much where I get my leads from. Um, what about YouTube? You, YouTube, do you get uh, a lot of business on yes, YouTube yes. or you get uh, a lot of traction? I, I, I'm a YouTube whore with my videos. <laughs> I pretty much use those videos that I have, and that's how I, I gain a lot of uh, business by um, shooting them a link of, of the videos. So. <laughs> Well, you know, Especially the, um, the disco cowboy video that gets them every time. Well, that, that's a that's a good thing, and I go, you know, I know, I know you have your thing at uh, your shorts with the the moose walking through a town, and you're like, damn, that moose is loose, bro, and you know, you go on to other things, and hey, you know, you're getting you know traction what? on it. And uh, Mike <laughs> saying that moose is loose on the loose. Yep, he's got that in here in the, in the chat. So. People know you for that, Terry, had, and it's not a bad thing. I had 289 subscribers on Thanksgiving. I have 1,002 subscribers now for them stupid shorts. Good for you. Good for so, you. Yeah, it just blew out. I blew out today. 
there you go. You got over a thousand subscribers. Cool. Good for you, man. That's that's a great thing. So with that said, I know uh Terry was traveling around a little bit, didn't get a chance to talk too much. I, I you know, wish you could talk a little more, but I didn't want you to talk and drive at the same time because your safety is important to us. We did chime in great, which I appreciate. And Mikey Mike is saying congratulations to the moose. It is congratulations to you. If you're watching this on Twitch, thank you so much. Thank you for chatting. I saw everyone talking, and I tried to get everything in there for what you guys are talking about. To the panel, thank you all for being here this evening, as always. We've got some great DJs on here. And Dwayne, can you take us out for tonight? I hope, I hope everyone have a great week. See you next time. Take care and stay blessed. Good night, everyone. Good night.